what's up guys this is manoj puktani i welcome you all on behalf of the adupedia world it's a wonderful day outside and i'm sure that you guys are enjoying your day and life to the fullest so i just hope that you guys are revising your topics time and again and by now you must have given up a proper kind of revision for standard and auditing that was 240 so that was relating to fraud and i'm sure that you guys must have revised the same before beginning this kind of video wherein i'll be discussing with you another great standard on auditing that is sa 250 which will discuss and make you understand something related to consideration of laws and regulations in an audit for financial statements so are you guys all set i just hope that you guys are properly revising your topic time and again because that will help you in sail through your ce final examination on time guys so that's simply one kind of idea which is immensely required ce final is a very vast course and you need to have that kind of attention towards it so perfect fast enough your seat belts we are about to take off with the next topic the next great presentation of ours and i'm sure that you guys will keep pouring your love on us keep supporting and we'll help you up in getting your doubts clear with each and every kind of proper understanding relating to auditing as well so sa 250 consideration of laws and regulations in an audit of financial statements so again the first thing is first like always what is it all about before starting any kind of essay we need to understand what this particular standard on auditing is going to provide us and why institute has actually incorporated in our course so guys this particular essay is going to bring out the extent to which you as an auditor are expected to verify the legal compliances we all are aware of one fact that in in a country like ours that is india and not not about just the country like ours apart from our nation our country even us government britain's government all these governments are like uh, providing deeper impact on one thing while running any kind of business you need to adhere each and every kind of law and regulation which has been made in that nation it is immensely required that we as good citizens of our respective nations we do follow and adhere to each and every kind of laws and regulations which have been like properly drafted and imposed by the government of that nation so that's just not the thing which is going to be like individually applicable that's also applicable to corporates to firms to llps and equally like even towards uh, partnerships and proprietorships concerns as well so this particular essay is going to ask and provide you some kind of guidance as to what is the extent to which we as auditors are expected to verify the legal compliances whether the company is properly fulfilling each and every kind of legal compliance while ensuring that they draft their financial statements in a correct and appropriate manner or not so this essay is basically defining the concept of non compliance wherever there will be compliance again at the same kind of arena there would be some certain kind of non compliances as well obviously in our nation definitely there are not much much many people kind of stuff wherein they all adhere to all the kind of responsibilities and due diligence obviously there are some kind of people who are just not going to follow the rules so non compliance is definitely going to happen and in that case laws are actually being made stringent against those kind of people so this essay will be defining the concept of non compliance as well and then identification of the type of laws and regulation which will be applicable to any of those corporates and this particular standard on auditing will help you in further understanding the ways to identify the non compliance what are the ways wherein you can identify okay this particular non compliance has already has happened in this particular organization so if the same has already happened so by how can we report about the same the reporting and other responsibilities that an auditor needs to focus upon in case of non compliance so 
we'll be discussing about all these things which are like extremely relevant to our profession to your profession so we need to adhere to all these guidelines and this essay is extremely important in that case in order to make you understand the kind of concept that our institute the institute of chartered accountants of india has played plays up for us okay guys are you all set this was all about this particular essay that what we are going to study that was immensely important for you to know before you mark the beginning of this standard of auditing now let's move to our main area so in any kind of business there are like two types of laws and regulation one which is directly impacting the financial statements as well as business and the other one which is having some direct impact on business though the same is not having direct impact on financial statements there have been like many cases like some kind of labor laws a labor law is a thing which is likely to have a direct impact on any kind of business but having said that there are a certain kind of possibility wherein it might not have that kind of decent direct impact on its financial statements that might be possibility but it doesn't have any of the direct impact on it so that will fall in the second category but if in case i'll talk about payment of value added tax definitely this thing is going to have a direct impact on financial statements as well as business so if a concern has not paid or deposited its value added tax its central seal tax on time it's going to have a much bigger impact on its business and accordingly at the same time it is going to directly provide the impact on its financial statements as well so if vat wouldn't be paid on the right time definitely it will stand in your balance sheet on the liability side as vat payable or cst payable for long and definitely in that case you as auditor will go for checking and you actually report this thing that the company hasn't paid the vat for so many years now so that is going to impact your financial statements as well as your business so that will fall in the first category so these are the basic two types of laws and regulations as far as our standard is being concerned so these are the basic two types of laws and regulations that is going to impact your business or your financial statements one which is having the direct impact on financial statements and business and the other one which is having a direct impact on business though the same is not having a direct impact on its financial statements this is one thing which you need to understand before you move into any of the segment relating to this particular standard on auditing the next most important thing which comes up is non compliance so we will be studying about fulfillment of the laws and regulations but only on the perspective from non compliance if in case non compliance is happening in a particular audit you find it out okay something hasn't been complied by the organization as far as the laws and regulations are concerned then only you are going to report on that so non compliance let's understand what does non compliance mean So guys, it's particularly an act of omission or commission by the entity. By omission, I mean that the company was liable to uh, was liable to pay for some of the dues, statutory dues on time. However, they forgot, or forgot intentionally or unintentionally. That's a different case. But omission has already been happened. Or even case, I say that the company was not supposed to do something. as far as the statutory legal compliances are concerned however the company did it intentionally or unintentionally that will presume to be in an act of commission in that case so an act of omission or commission by the entity either intentional or in unintentional which are contrary to the prevailing laws or regulations of that nation so that will be covered under the criteria of non compliance this does not include the personal misconduct of employees so that's something different non compliance we are talking about something with relation to the laws and regulations which have been like made by the government or legislature of that nation so it doesn't include any of the thing with relation to its employees the conduct personal conduct so i hope that you guys are pretty much clear with now the types of laws and regulations and the concept of non compliance over here 
now let's move to our next thing wherein i'll be discussing with you the requisite amount of responsibilities so what all responsibilities auditors and management share as far as the compliance for laws and regulations are concerned so management's responsibility for compliance with laws and regulations so guys get this thing very much clear in your mind right at the first sight that management is the person which is actually primarily responsible for ensuring the legal compliance so for all the laws and regulations which are been like uh, required by the statute in order to fulfill the same in an appropriate and sufficient kind of manner it is the management which is primarily responsible for ensuring its legal compliance so it is the responsibility of management with the oversight of those charged with governance to ensure that the entity's operations are conducted in accordance with the provisions of the laws and regulations so accordingly they are have been like many of the procedures which an entity may or should implement in order to assist the prevention or detection of those non compliance with relation to the legal laws and regulations so what all are those procedures which needs to be implemented by an entity to ensure the legal compliance number 1 that is monitoring of the legal requirements so monitoring the legal requirements and ensuring that the operating procedures are designed to meet all these requirements in a timely and appropriate manner so you need to monitor the legal requirements each and every time the company needs to know that at which point of time they need to file uh, the chalan for tds they need to file the return for tds same goes with vat same goes with service tax same goes with sales tax all these things so they need to monitor what are the legal requirements which have been like imposed on them from the state government as well as central government so monitoring of the legal requirements comes as the first and the foremost thing so they need to know it that is the responsibility of management second thing is the operating uh, appropriate systems of internal control so the company needs to institute and operate the appropriate kind of systems for internal control they need to ensure whether all these legal requirements are duly and completely fulfilled on time or not obviously there has to be a person who needs to check it out so it could be general manager uh, of finance and accounts it could be manager of finance and accounts it could be assistant manager of finance and accounts but there has to be a person who has been like provided with the kind of responsibility to supervise whether all these activities are actually getting fulfilled or not on time the next thing will come in as the management needs to develop and publicize and follow a code of conduct uh have you ever visited any of the company wherein you must have got uh, sops i'm sure you must have got so guys standard of operating procedure have you heard about this name or term any uh, way before if not i'll tell you about this thing. so each and every kind of big company in this nation it is mean like told them on a recommendatory basis that they need to have their standard on operating procedures the kind of functions they are having in their premises so standard on operating procedures are nothing but the guidelines as to how you will be able to perform a certain kind of function so they provide you the kind of checklist okay that you need to document this thing and then finally go for this then again step Three, then four, then five, and then done. Conclusion. So these are the guidelines which will make you pave the way to complete that task in an appropriate and sufficient manner. So each and every company needs to follow that kind of code of conduct. They need to have those kind of documentation wherein you can easily access. Okay, how the things are actually going on with with respect to legal compliance. So that's the third third and the most important thing over here. Next will come in as ensure that your employees are properly trained dude you have appointed a person who is just become clear okay i no offense to all the people who are become clear uh, uh, they are intelligent enough i'm sure about it but that particular job demands someone to be having like precisely good knowledge so you could have appointed a ca in order to perform that task in a way better manner so are your employees getting properly trained for that task to be done or not so you need to ensure that it's a legal uh, legally compliance uh, to have a chartered accountant or cost accountant or company secretary to get that task done there are so many things 
which are being like provided by the Ministry of Corporate Affairs (ROC), and they clearly tell you so you that this particular task is rightly to be digitally signed by these three persons: company secretary, chartered accountant, or cost accountant. And apart from availing their services, you are actually training a person who is like just a BCom, whether he'll be able to provide you the kind of requisite services on time and in the appropriate manner. Absolutely not, because legal statute is asking you to get. C A C S or C W A C W A C M A nowadays on board, and you are you haven't appointed the kind of employees who have been like properly trained for that task. So you need to ensure that your employees are properly trained and they understand the code of conduct. So which is an extremely important thing. Next thing will come in as these people. You need to uh, the management needs to monitor and com- com- monitor the compliance with the code of conduct and. Whether the same thing are like acting appropriately to discipline the employees who fail to comply with it or not, are some kind of serious actions being taken against those employees who are breaching the code of conduct? Are sufficient and requisite kind of reactions and actions are being like taken play taken into place in order to ensure that those employees who have not been following the code of conduct on time are punished? So you need to ensure that kind of procedure as well. what the company is taking up as a measure to train those employees and finally if the same are not providing them the requisite services in a properly trained manner so what kind of disciplinary actions are the company taking against those employees so that legal code of conduct is also necessary next will come in as the engagement of uh, legal advisors obviously nowadays uh, each and every companies are appointing their legal advisors so is your company has your company by now appointed that legal advisor for uh, its company or not so uh, engaging the legal advisor to assist in the monitoring of legal requirements is absolutely necessary and the last one will be maintaining a register each and every company needs to ensure that uh, they maintain a register of significant laws and regulations with which the entity has to comply within its particular industry and record the complaints which are being made against that company on that front they need to ensure that so these were the procedures which you need to know uh, the company management needs to know and you and uh, as auditor needs to check whether the management has actually complied with the same or not monitoring their legal requirements operating the appropriate system of internal controls following a proper code of conduct ensuring that the employees are properly trained and if in case they fail to comply with it are the, is the company acting appropriately to discipline its employee or not and finally engaging the legal advisors and maintaining a register of significant laws of regulations i hope you guys got the complete clarity as to what management's responsibility is in order to maintain and duly imply with the compliance of legal and regulation legal laws and regulations i just hope that okay guys with this well, let's move to our next thing wherein i'll be training you up and making you understand as to what is your responsibility as auditor so guys auditor's responsibility we need to ensure that we understand our responsibility first of all before telling others so the auditor is not responsible first of all get that straight we as auditors are not responsible for detecting preventing or reporting the non compliance except in some certain exceptional cases where the auditor is required to report on compliance with certain regulation so you need to know that our responsibility is basically divided into two segments one with the laws and regulations which are having direct impact on financial statements and the other one wherein the laws and regulations are not having a direct impact on financial statements so with one which is having the direct impact on financial statements we need to obtain sufficient and appropriate audit evidence about the compliance with the laws whether the company is been maintaining proper records for bad cst whether the company is being depositing its service tax allowance on time whether the company is filing its tds return on time or not so we need to obtain sufficient and appropriate kind of audit evidence about the compliance of all these laws which are directly having its impact on financial statements but if i'll talk about something about the laws and regulations which are not having the direct impact on financial statements so there our responsibility as auditors is pretty much limited 
to undertake some kind of specified audit procedures in order to help identify the non compliance and we need to report the same to the management that okay management you haven't fulfilled these compliances kindly ensure that you fulfill them right away or at least in the next quarter wherever the things are actually going to happen next so our responsibility is limited to undertake some kind of specified audit procedures in order to help identify the non compliance in that case so guys did you got the complete clarity with it i'm sure you got perfect thank you so much let's move to our basic thing wherein i'll tell you our as auditors consideration of compliance with the laws and regulations what is our consideration that we need to ensure that happens so an auditor's consideration for compliance with the legal laws and regulations first of all the auditor shall obtain a general understanding of the legal and regulatory framework which is applicable to that entity or that industry or sector in which that particular entity is operating and how the particular entity is complying with that framework uh, you guys must have played i'm sure uh, if i'm talking about uh, the viewers who as boys so you guys must have played cricket some somewhere down the line in your life particular so uh, did you start at playing right away on the first instance no i don't think so uh, there must be someone who must have asked you up how to handle or this bat in your hand or how to particularly bowl to the batsman there must have been some person whom you would have like watched or observed first of all okay how to bowl particularly in a cricket match okay you have to take up your hand this way and swing the ball in the air so you must have got an idea after observing same goes same thing same principles will are actually applicable in your practical professional life as well so an auditor as an auditor you need to first obtain some kind of general understanding okay this particular company is been like working in a manufacturing sector so certainly in that case excise laws will be applicable to it open up your minds wow excise will be applicable to manufacturing concerns but the same excise is going to apply for service sector absolutely not why because these guys are not manufacturing service sector is definitely not manufacturing any of the things they are just providing you the services so here in services will be applicable for sure so an auditor needs to have a general kind of understanding of the legal and regulatory framework within which that particular entity is working and within the industry it's working and you need to know whether the company is being like actually complying with that framework or not first thing is always first remember next thing and as an auditor you shall obtain all the sufficient and appropriate audit evidences regarding the compliance with the provisions of those laws and regulations which are being like generally recognized to have a direct effect on determination of material amounts and disclosures in the financial statements so you need to obtain all the sufficient and appropriate kind of audit evidence with regarding to each and every kind of compliance with relation to these laws and regulations and the third thing will come in as the auditor shall perform some kind of audit procedures to identify the instances where non compliance is being done with all those laws and regulations that may have a material kind of effect on the financial statements so what all do you need to know over there you need to inquire with the management okay why this thing hasn't been done by now tell me management tell me the general manager tell me next inspect the correspondence by correspondence i simply mean the documents the relevant licensing which has been like issued by all those regulatory authorities have we got all the documents if in case labor laws are really applicable to that particular company has the company been issued license by now or not or is it, it is it in some, uh, still the application kind of stage so you need to know that thing you need to inspect all the correspondence one by one the fourth thing will come in as during each and every audit of yours you need to understand as an auditor one thing that you shall remain alert to the possibility that any of the other audit procedures which are being like applied by you today may bring out some kind of instances for non compliance or suspected non compliance with laws and regulations to the auditor's attention there might be possibility 
that you are keeping some kind of audit evidence in your working file and which may not directly uh, provide you some kind of evidences for as to w- for what purpose you kept it in your working file but it may bring some kind of instances of some other non compliance that might be a case so you need to remain alert to that kind of possibility as well next thing will come in as you need to obtain written representation from the management that all known instances of non compliance sub- suspected or unsuspected by now so they have been like with those kind of laws and regulations have like been already disclosed by the audit team to the auditor so you need to obtain that kind of written representation from management in that case so that should be your consideration one you need to obtain the general understanding of the legal and the regulatory framework which is applicable to the entity second you need to obtain all your sufficient and appropriate kind of evidences audit evidences regarding the compliance third have you like applied some kind of audit procedures to identify some kind of instances for non compliance if not the next time you go for audit do it and fourth one remain alert to that possibility maybe there is a chance that your audit procedure which has been applied for something else may bring out some kind of instances for non compliance for other things and finally obtain the written representation from the management for disclosure of non compliance to the auditor perfect guys Are you all set for your next audit? I'm sure next time you'll be definitely providing us some kind of good audit evidences. <laughs> Perfect. Go ahead with that. I'll be concluding my video with a dose of motivation. I'll be concluding and I'll be taking up the remaining presentation of this standard on auditing in my next video, wherein you'll be uh, you'll get to understand some of the remaining parts of it. So I'll be concluding my this video with a dose of motivation, and that will be. The only thing standing between you and your goal is a bullshit story you keep telling yourself as to why you can't achieve it this quote was being mentioned by jordan jordan belford i am a huge fan of uh, wolf of wall street i am a huge fan of leonardo dicaprio as well uh, both the things uh, were marvelous in that movie so uh, this is one of the quote which is being uh, which has been like mentioned by the person from whom this movie was inspired jordan belford the wolf of wall street uh, was inspired by this uh, man so he used to tell that the only thing which is standing between you and your goal is a bullshit story that you keep telling yourself as to why you cannot achieve it i've seen many other people who keep creeping up about things in their life they say we were not able to achieve this because of this thing which has happened to us we were not able to achieve this because that thing happened to us believe me guys that's not the case it's just that you don't want to take that pain you don't want to go for that extra effort you don't want success that bad in your life probably that's the only thing as to why you're just delaying from achieving being that kind of success in your life just cooking up some kind of stories why you can't achieve it and that's the only thing which is standing between you and your goal goal so you, before making any kind of or like before cooking any of the stories you need to tell yourself next time that yes you are the person who can change your fortunes you are the only person who is going to make it happen so why are you wasting your time just go and take some action period thank you so much on behalf of the edupedia world keep interacting by your questions queries in the youtube comment boxes we we'll love to hear you and in case you guys have any of the grievances or queries do write to us do write to me i'll answer you up we just want you to get success in your life stay connected that would help us in understanding your needs way better guys love you all take care